Hello everybody. Tonight we're going to talk about something uh, that has been uh, mentioned to me a few times on Instagram and that is uh, drying off our cows. Why we do it and how we do it. Well for starters um, I suppose the best thing to show is what we actually use to dry off our cows. Um, so we use these tubes. These are inserted into each quarter of the cow. Um, and that's done after milking. The cow has to be completely thoroughly milked out, um, even pulled out to make sure there's no um, milk at all left in each one of those quarters. And then you have a tube then to administer a full tube into each quarter of the cow. Before you do so, uh, we have a wipe here. Um, it's just basically an alcohol wipe that you wipe the end of the cow's tits uh, to make sure that everything is spotless clean and completely free from any bacteria. Um, we have a red spray then, very important. We mark the cow with that so that we know that she has been dried off and uh, there's no confusement then of her getting mixed up with the milk inherit. So I suppose the first thing I do then is I go to uh, my chart. I have a list of all the cows that are coming soon and I pick out a few cows that are, um, you know, they're already marked in cows here that are dried. But uh, we pick through them and uh, we get their dates and see how far they're off of calving. So once we figure out uh, a cow is coming close to within 60 days of calving, uh, we dry her off. So um, we go out, we pick them out and we put a little red spray on the back of their elder uh, before we take them into milk so we know the ones that we're going to be drying. Um, I tend to not dry too many at a milking time because it takes a little bit of time and um, it can disrupt your milking. I do it during milking. Some people will do it at a different time of the day, but I find cows are more relaxed when they come in at their normal time rather than actually bringing them in the middle of the day because they know something's, something's happening here or something's up. So they claim to be a little bit more nervous. So during milking is when I do it. Um, I suppose uh, the first thing we do is we milk the cow out. Um, we make sure that she's completely milked out. Um, we trigger it all, each and every quarter, make sure there's no milk whatsoever left in any of the quarters. The next thing we do is we get a wipe, just an alcoholic wipe. We wipe the ends of uh, each one of our teeth and make sure that they're spotlessly clean. And then we get one of these tubes and we ad administer, we take the cap off, and then we administer a clean tube into each quarter and empty the full content each, into each quarter. Um, that's just basically, um, it's like putting a stop on the milk to be produced and it also has an antibiotic into it to keep the animal's quarter in perfect health while she's um, ha in her rest period as we call it. Now some people um, use different dry cows, there's loads of them on the market. Some of them are specific for people that maybe has had problems with mastitis or somatic cell count and things but we just use a standard dry cow that we've used and has worked well. It's Bova Clox uh, DC Extra is the one we've always used for the past five or six years and it's worked well. We've had no mastitis on cow's calving now uh, in that in that period of time, which is which has been an excellent excellent achievement on it. So we stick with them for that reason. Um, this one here is a forty nine day um, dry cow. Now there is ones that are a thirty day dry cow. Um, I don't recommend them. I never will. Um, a cow needs a proper rest period, um, at least uh, 60 days. So these here are 49, it goes up to 49, and then um, she, you know, the rest of the days don't matter. She's starting to spring up then, preparing for a calf, so, so the dry cow needs time to basically get out of the system. Um, obviously, when the cow calves, if you dry the cow too late or left it too long and use the leg of this here, 49, and the cow calved um, say 60 or say 50 to 55 days um, there, you have to be very careful that there's not residue of this antibiotic in the milk. Now some of these dry cows can run from anything from 90 to 120 hours after the cow calves um, with antibi antibiotic residue so you have to be really careful that you've milked that cow enough of times before you let that milk into the tank. Um, we test, we have our own test system and we test all our cows before, regardless of what it says on labels, because you cannot go by labels. Um, you just have to double check it yourself. So we test all our cows before they get into the tank. Um, so we'll just have a wee walk out here now, out to the cows themselves, and we'll talk a little bit more 
about what actually happens in the drying off period. So we're out here among the cows and you can see clearly on the backs, you see the cows with the red spray. Well, you see other cows mixed along with them there that don't have any spray along with them. And they are the ones that are milking. Now, this side are all milkers and uh, the most of this side is dry. So I'd say about 90% of our herd, 85 to 90% of our herd is dry at the moment. Um, so we're milking very few. Um, we're just milking cows now at the moment that aren't calving till late March um, or early April. We have a few of those, so um, they're just not at their, at their drying off period time yet. Now, why we dry off cows? Well, I'm gonna give you the simple, the simple reasoning behind it. Imagine a cow has milked there for 10 months straight. She's milked twice a day. Um, that's a lot of, that's a lot of, of use out of, a, out of an animal's um, quarters and she needs a rest period. Basically, it's, it's a rest period is what it is. So cows have tissue in their elders called mammaries. Not memories, mammaries. Now, some people pronounce it differently, but that I'll just uh, hit it there on the bottom and you can have a look there and you'll see the actual name of it. But basically all that is, is that's the tissue that lines the inside of a cow's elder, uh, each one of her quarters. And uh, that tissue needs time to heal or heal or regenerate, basically. And um, if that cow does not get enough time for that tissue to heal, you can expect that cow to produce the same amount of milk um, during the next lactation. So it's critically important that a cow gets the proper length of, um, of drying off period for her elder to recover and for not only that, but for her to um, give her time to build up condition uh, and put more energy into her calf. Because if you see cows out on, on grass during the summertime, say the month of April, um, late April when cows are at their peak, um, and milk production. You'll see a lot of cows will lose a lot of condition off their backs. That's basically because the cow is putting her energy into producing milk. So drying off lets the cow um, basically concentrate on producing a healthy calf and uh, not have to be producing milk. So um, that's all it is. That's the simple, uh, simple reasoning behind it. So, but it is critical. A lot of people don't uh, dry their cows off soon enough and run them into maybe a month before calving because the cow might be um, produced or producing a lot of milk right up until that time. But it wouldn't matter to us um, how much milk that cow was given. Um, she would be dried off and that's it. There's no, no passing that uh, two month uh, deadline. I just, I stick to that rule and it works, it works perfectly. Also, picking the right dry cow, as I said before, um, if you have cows that have problems with mastitis or somatic cell count and things like that, um, there are dry cows out there that contain different antibiotics that can, that can um, deal with them problems. Um, but again, it needs time to work. So, so uh, a dry cow spends a lot of time in, a, in an animal system and uh, it gives it just the proper amount of time that it needs for that to work. Go in there. Here's a cow here. You can see her 606. I don't know if you read her tag number, 606. 606 is not in calf. Um, she was AI'd a few times and she just, it just wasn't going to happen. Now we have a little problem with leptospirosis. Um, quite a big problem actually. Uh, our readings were quite high in our milk samples uh, that we took the year. So we're gonna be vaccinating. For the first time, we're gonna be vaccinating the herd for leptospirosis um, now in, in, in February, March. Um, the whole herd will have to be done, have to be done twice the first time and then once therefore after. Um, but uh, yeah, we had a little problem. We're not noticing huge fertility issues, but leptospirosis basically um, causes fertility, fertility problems and causes animals to abort calf or not go in calf. But uh, this animal hasn't, she, um, she went dry fairly quickly. Um, we milked on for another while at her, but she went dry herself naturally. We dried her off there about two or three weeks ago. But you can see she's, um, She's bulked up. I don't know if the camera shows it, but she has bulked up quite significantly. So she has a lot of weight on her. So she wasn't putting any um, energy into producing milk because she had no calf and her natural instinct was to just to go dry. So you can see the reason she went dry, she put on an awful lot of weight. Um, and that's just the same thing. When we put the cows dry here, they do the very same thing. So yeah, we'll go into the power now and we'll pick it up from there.
So it's just a couple of cows here that uh, have been dried recently. Now this is uh, one here that was dried. She was dried about a couple of days ago and you can see um, her udder still will be a little bit, produce a little bit of milk. Uh, the milk will continue to be produced for a short period after you don't touch it. Um, the cow's elder will, will uh, is treated so it'll go dry naturally. And that'll all dissipate now within the next uh, two weeks. Um, the elder will completely go down and the milk that's in there will, will be absorbed itself. Um, you can see this cow here now, she uh, will be, she's starting to spring now, as we call spring, she's starting to build an elder, her elder starts to, to fill up. Um, she's not due for another two weeks, but she's already starting to make a little bit of an elder. Um, we go over across here, we get a couple of cows that are a wee bit closer. If I can get these girls to get out of my way a wee bit. So we're looking at one here now and again, you see she's starting to open up. Um, she's due in about two days time. Well, her date is two days time. She probably run a wee bit over that, but uh, she's starting to show all the symptoms of, 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 of getting ready to, to for a calf to come. And um, we've quite a few, we've, we've other ones in another house as well. We've, I think we have seven or eight that will be are springing nicely now and it's starting to get prepared. And there's another one there. She will be, she's due actually, um, her time's in, in three days. So I've no doubt she'll, she will run her time by because most of these cows elders will, will pack up pretty big. Well, hopefully will pack up, pack up pretty big before the calves. So it's important. Um, I've seen animals that weren't dried before in time and they never fully spring up an elder or not a good enough elder. Um, uh, by the time the calves. So you can see there's another cow here. She was dried about, um, I'd say she's dried now about four weeks, about a month ago. Elder's gone. Um, she's anything that's been at now is has been built into condition and 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 energy towards the calves. So I put this whole house here now. That's the heifers down below. This entire house should be calved. Um, definitely calved before the end of January. Um, there's 25 here, so they'll they'll definitely all be. I'll be calved um, before January. Um, I think the latest one here is the 22nd of January. So yeah, it's gonna be a busy time. All these heifers will be calved in January. Um, and uh, yeah, I know one of them's here at the moment. Uh, she's there somewhere. I'll just take a wee walk in now and I'll actually show you her. Um, but she's getting very, very close. Through these heifers first, um, you, you know, animals when I put in, they haven't been in in a while. They're, it can jump back and forth past you or run past you when you walk through. It's important to walk through them. I walk through my heifers now um, on a regular basis. They actually come to you now and the problem is now get them to get out of your way when you walk and they just stand there. But they've got uh, very docile and they're very, very tame and calm and uh, happy with that. That's, that's the little bit of walking through pays off. Um, but it's nice to see animals nice and relaxed as you're, as you're going through them. Um, but there's a heifer down here, we'll just have a quick look at. The tree here now, we haven't make any fuss. So this is a heifer here, she's um, first in line. So she'll be calving. Uh, I don't think tonight, um, I've looked at her there now, but she'll, she'll probably be going to the calving pen anyway, just for the safe side. Heifers uh, tend to, you know, they tend to be a, wee, a higher risk than a cow, especially they're having their first calf, so I don't take any, any chances. If I see a heifer that's coming anywhere close, I just run her into the calving pen and um, just keep a closer eye on her with the camera, but she's getting pretty close now at, the, at this stage. Her elders is pretty full, can't really hold much more, so. And I just know by her, her characteristics that time is coming, so I'd be thinking uh, tomorrow, tomorrow if not, definitely tomorrow night, she'll be calved. So that's it, that's the evening milking done. I just throw back a wee bit of silage here now, and that's me finished for the evening. So I uh, hope you enjoyed this video. Um, Thanks very much for everybody in, uh, who, who subscribed to our channel. Um, if you haven't done so and you like our videos, hit that subscribe button. Give us a like. Don't be afraid to put a comment down below. I'm getting quite a few comments now on YouTube and on Instagram. So um, I'm doing my best to get, get back to most of them. I don't get them all, but I do read them all. Um, it's just now with more videos and more subscribers, there's a lot more comments coming in now than, than there was at the beginning. So, But I do read them and I do... I do um, appreciate them all there's loads of people giving me great advice on different jobs whether it's the new shed that we're building 
um, or in anything, anything in general. And they're all, it's always taken, advice is always taken on board. There's always room to learn something. So um, thanks for watching as always. Um, and we will catch you very shortly in the next one.